Greetings in Jesus' name. This is Pastor Gene Guerrero, New Life Center. Uh, we are coming to you today uh, to thank you for letting you, us come into your home. Some of us think it might be strange because we're so used to coming into a building. But when you read the book of Acts, Acts, the Bible talks, they went from house to house. And so we're actually at this point right now, we're at homes like it, it actually started in the book of Acts. So something could happen in the midst of these services while we're giving the songs and the preaching. That somebody get filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody want to get baptized. So that's why we are very excited to be with you all. We're expecting some awesome music and some great preaching. It is, it's our time to worship in the midst of the sickness and the earthquakes surround our city and our country. Let's worship together as we gather together in our rooms. Let us not just sit back and just fold our hands, but while whoever's preaching, that we would say amen, thank you Jesus, that Lord, our home is where you can come down and touch us. We want to be part of your life. I'm excited here to be with you. Listen, if there come a time you need some more information about New Life Center, go to our website, newlifecenterupc.com. We're looking to hear from you. Give us some input. We'd like to do greater things in our ministry. God bless you as we start our service with great music and great preaching. Amen. Lord bless you all.
Hallelujah. How many know that there's victory in his name? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter the circumstance that we're going through right now. There's victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you just worship along with us?
this time. That, Lord, you're going to fight our battles for us. That no matter what we're going through right now, Lord, you're going to fight our battles for us. Good morning. Nice and loud. Thank you for tuning in to the New Life Center um, live stream. I know this is a little different uh, coming to you while you're in your homes, on your couches, in your pajamas. Probably just had breakfast. You got syrup drizzling down your face. Um, but thank you for tuning in. And we believe that you're going to be blessed for being with us this morning, that even though you're at home, uh, we're still all together. So I believe that what God has given me this morning is something that um, is still applicable, especially in today's day and age and in this time. Uh, and I pray that right where you are, amen with me. Uh, 
be involved with the service. Uh, God's going to do something great in you and in your family. I believe that. So before we get too deep in, I want to pray. I want to ask that God would bless you right now in your home, that his spirit would be with you and your family. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for every opportunity that we get to stand in your presence and to feel a great move of your spirit. And I pray right now, Lord God, that you would speak to our hearts. You know the word that we need. You understand what we need to understand in this time with everything that's been going on. And I pray right now, Lord, that this would be an encouragement and a comfort to your church right where we're at. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, this morning I want to, uh, I feel like I've been commissioned to tell you something that you already know. And it's not a new thing, it's not a new story, not a new message, but I think it's entirely applicable to where we stand right now in today's day and age. So that being said, I want to start with a story. I remember when I was a boy, I was swimming at a friend's house. And I remember the day, it was so clear to me, it was just bright and blue skies. It was sunshine, it was warm, it was the summertime. And so what we did is we decided we wanted to go swimming. So we went to his uh, house, he had a big pool, a huge pool. And I was a lot younger, so it was probably a lot bigger to me than it would be to me now. But I remember that day, it was so beautiful that we swam for hours. We just enjoyed every moment that we had in the sunshine. We swam and we swam and we swam and the pool was big and it was wide and we were little and we had plenty of room to move and it was just an awesome time. But at the end of the day, when we were all done swimming, I remember his parents, they had this big tarp and the tarp was designed to keep the pool warm and it was supposed to be solar powered and really cool. You could see the sun, it would shine through the tarp. And I remember we, it was our job that when we were done swimming, we would put the tarp back over the pool. And so I remember it was because my parents, their parents, they always told us when you put the tarp back on the pool, you are not to go underneath it. Don't swim underneath the tarp. And I said, well, that doesn't really matter because it, it looks cool. And I remember it taunted me. I, was, I had to see what it looked like underneath that tarp. The sun shining in underneath, inside the water, I had to see it. And so as we were trying to fix and put that tarp over the water in that pool, I remember feeling, uh, I remember seeing the tarp that was struggling. We couldn't get it to just land straight on the, the water. And so I took the opportunity. I said, well, now's my chance. If I'm going to see what it looks like in this water with this tarp, I am going to swim underneath there and try to fix this tarp. So that's what I did. And thoughtlessly, I, I hopped in and I ducked under the water. And I began to swim. And my idea was, I'm going to get to the middle of the tarp, and I'm just going to stand up. And when I stand up, it's going to roll, and it's going to fold itself out. And it's going to be all fixed. Easy peasy. Right? No big deal. So that's what I did. I swam right to the middle. And I began, I tried to stand up. And as I did that, I hit the tarp, and then it wouldn't move. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to try again. So I ducked into the water and I tried my best to stand up, but I couldn't do it. By this point in time, I realized that I, this, it was too heavy for me to push up and I was running out of air. So I remember in that moment, I thought to myself, well, I've got two choices. One, I try to push as hard as I can to get this tarp up and over my head so I can get a, a, a breath of air. Or I try to swim back to the edge from which I came. That moment, I thought, well, it's now or never. And so I ducked back under the water, and I began to swim back to the edge. And you might be thinking in your mind, well, did he make it? Well, no, I didn't make it. I'm actually dead. I'm just kidding. Of course, yes, I made it. In the nick of time, I jumped up out of the water and took a huge gasp of air. Now, I remember in this moment, all the things that came to my mind the panic that set in in that moment, the fear that came over my mind and over my body when I realized that it's now or never. And if I don't act the right way, if I don't do what is going to save me, that I could drown right here in this water. I remember the feeling of the grip of the lack of oxygen. 
as I began to journey back and frantically toward the edge of that pool. So here's my point. Fear is built into us. It's built into us by our humanity, by preservation, by a desperation to live. Fear. It exists in our everyday life. And fear is what warned me to act now or to face the consequences. It was fear that told my parents not to let me swim underneath that tarp because they knew what could happen if everything went wrong. They'd seen things before. It was fear. See, fear, in that respect, it can be a good thing. It can be a warning against something that can hurt you. It can be a sense or a feeling that what I'm, at, uh, what I'm doing or where I am is not a good place to be. It's natural self-preservation. It's fear. It's a natural mechanism designed within us to preserve us. But yet the Bible clearly states that God has not given us the spirit of fear. And what an odd thing. And over and over and over again, you see that God tells his people, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. And I think to myself, what, how is this, why do we have this, this natural inclination of fear built within us, and yet still God, on the other hand, is saying, fear not, don't fear. Am I supposed to fear or am I not supposed to fear? Is there some kind of contradiction happening? We're told to resist something that's natural to us. And it's true. But is God contradicting himself? It's all right to ask those types of questions. Is God contradicting himself when he says, don't fear? No. He's not. You see, there is a type of fear that goes beyond our senses. It goes beyond natural reason. It digs into our psyche. There's a deep fear. There's a fear that can bury itself so deep in our heart that it causes us to become people that we are not. There's a fear that can grip our hearts so much that it can change our state of mind, that it can alter how we view the world. You've seen people out of fear that do dangerous and uh, absolutely unbelievable things. It's fear that can cause people when it grips them so tight to commit acts of, of pure evil. It's fear. As a matter of fact, we can look in the Bible and see that uh, when Jesus was born and the people, they called out and said, the king is going to be born. But the king in that day, he decided he was going to send soldiers to kill the firstborn, the, every firstborn that he could find because he was afraid that his kingdom would be lost. It was fear that caused him to do something that was unfamiliar probably to who he was. He, it, was it gripped his mind. So what is this fear? It may swirl around you and chaos may be about you. This fear is the fear that the church is resisting. This is the fear that can limit faith. It can stop faith in its tracks. This type of fear is the type of fear that God has not given. Folks may be getting sick all around you. You might not be feeling well in your home right now. On the couch wondering what's going to happen this week. You might be looking at your husband or your wife. And you might be afraid of what could happen next. Not knowing, having the uncertainty. It's fear. And you might be staring at a giant and all you have in your hand is just a few stones. And it's true that jobs might be lost and people might struggle to find things that they need. But the church, the church might be shaken, but it's not stirred. You might feel for that moment a natural sense of fear. But God is giving us the strength to do something so much greater with that fear. So I've come to remind you this morning, right where you are, in the comfort of your home, in your kingdom, that even though it might seem uh, uh, uncertain your future, 
or what it might look like when you wake up in the morning. Something that I know is for certain. You will make it. You'll be okay. You're not going to perish in the chaos. It's not going to collapse your life. Maybe it'll feel like it right now, and that's okay to feel those things. But what we have going on right now in this world is the greatest moment that the church has ever seen. Every opportunity that we have to show that God's promises are real. And that anything that you need, God can provide. He can provide it for you and your family. I'm thankful to know that every step that I take is ordered. Every moment that I walk and I have I, I, not knowing what my next step is going to be, there's scripture that says he's a lamp unto our feet. He's a light unto our path. I know that even though I don't know what my next step might be, I know a God who does. I've come to tell you and encourage you this morning that it's not over. It's just beginning for you. All week, my family dealt trial after trial after trial. And you'd think that my worst fear would be going through those things with them, but it wasn't. Instead, it was my worst fear was the fact that I wasn't there with them, but 500 and so miles away because of work. Hundreds of miles away, and all I could do was pray and trust that God would take care of them. I knew he would, but still, if I could just put my hands to it, if I could just do something with my own, that was what I wanted to do. Fear was there, and I even joked with my wife that I wonder... What new chaotic thing is going to happen to us when we wake up in the morning? Because it was, it was thing after thing after thing. First, I bump my head, you know, going out shooting with friends. And then the coronavirus takes off and the whole world's sick and panicking. Then my daughter breaks her arm and then the whole city of Salt Lake has an earthquake. I mean, you talk about fear and chaos and panic. We didn't know what was going to happen next, but I'll, I'll tell you right now, the church isn't a building. That's not what it is. It is a group of people with a collective experience of having seen God's promises come to pass. Every single person that walks into this church can know that God has walked with them through things in their life that they never thought they could get through. Times where marriages were rockier. Times where finances didn't seem like they were ever going to come uh, and get fixed or the kids were acting crazy. Things that were chaotic in their lives. They can come in and tell you that how God was with them the whole time. I've come to tell you this morning right where you're at, whatever it is that you're facing right now, whatever fear that might be coming over your mind or over your heart, my God is able to deal with it. Don't let the spirit of fear come in and try to take a hold of what God's doing. The promise of God is real. It's true. And it's still happening. It's not over. So that being said, I've picked out some scriptures to encourage you this morning. And the first one is this. Matthew 24, verse 6 and 7 says this. And ye shall hear war of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Can you imagine? For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. That's an encouraging scripture. Or here's another one, Luke 21, 11. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Those don't sound maybe that encouraging to you, but let me explain why it's encouraging to me. It's encouraging because when the world sees chaos and when everybody else is panicking and running to the stores and buying out all the toilet paper, when chaos is ensuing everyone else, it's the church that has the answer. It's the church that's read the book. It's the church that looks at the scripture and says that I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be beat up or broken down by this. Why? Because I know that this is going to happen. I saw, I read it in the scriptures. It says it must come to pass. And in all of that, in all the chaos that we might see, that how quickly it all comes down and how uh, fast it can all break apart, it's the church that will be the ones that have the answer. 
sister. We don't have to be afraid when things start to fall apart. No, we, we have a God that will take us through everything. All the things that we think are going to destroy us, that are going to take our lives away. We realize that we have a God that's watching out for us. When the world doesn't have the answer, when they can't figure out why it's all coming down or what to do next, the church is still praying. The church is still on their knees. The church still believes that God will take care of them. And that's what we are. You're the answer. You're the solution. The truth that we have, that we rely on, the one when we call out to God, when we say, Lord, you are my refuge and my strength, my present help in times of trouble. When those words are uttered out of your mouth, something begins to change in the atmosphere of the world that they might not yet understand. But all our job is, is to turn the light on for them and allow them to see the glory of God as it comes down in our churches and in our homes. As we watch and we see how God carries us through time and time again in those moments where it seems like there's no answer. We read scriptures like Jeremiah 29, 11. It's my favorite scripture. For I know the thoughts, the scripture says, I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord. The thoughts of peace and not of evil, but to give you an expected end. It's peace. I'm so thankful that, I, that God will lay that scripture on my heart every time when I think of how, how I don't know what's going to happen. When I'm thinking about the well-being of my family, of my wife and my daughter of my mother-in-law and the two boys that live in my home. And I wonder, how are we going to make it next? I remember this scripture, that God has not forgotten about me, that instead he has known exactly where I am. He knows the thoughts I think before I think it, and every step before I take it. How tremendous it is that God knows our heart, and he knows where you are this morning. He knows every moment that you have, every moment of doubt and fear. He knows every time that you wonder what's going to happen, every time your heart is troubled. And what does he say? Fear not. Why? Why go against this thing that might feel natural to you? Why? When, I, when fear is the thing that's keeping me alive. Because that's putting a, a, a level of trust in yourself that doesn't belong there. That level of fear. When we get to the point where fear takes over our faith, we lose and the devil wins. But I've come to tell you this morning, if you'll take whatever fear you might be feeling right now in the uncertainty of this time and age and turn that fear into faith, you'll watch as God will take your family and you to places you never thought you could ever go. This is the moment the church has been waiting for. It needs you. And God knows exactly where you are. So this morning, even right there in your homes, this might be the end of me talking right now, but I pray that you would allow this message to sit and settle inside of your home. Let it take its place and take its course. That you would believe and have faith that God will take care of you. And you would walk with boldness, believing that he is the one that keeps his promises. Let me pray over you. Jesus, I pray right now that you would touch your church. You understand, Lord, everything that's going on. The sicknesses, the chaos, and the uncertainty. But God, I believe that there is a tremendous opportunity that lies before us. God, and I believe that we are going to see miracles, signs, and wonders like we've been praying for. This is the year, Lord, that you prosper your church. God, we believe that you are going to do it. I pray right now, Lord, over every sick person in our homes. God, that you would bring healing right to where they are. That you would move upon their soul. Remind them, O oh Lord, of your promises. And that you never fail. Touch your church. Bring encouragement. Bring peace like your scripture says. Remember us, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. We love you, and we hope to have you right back in the house of God all together as soon as we can. In Jesus' name. Oh, how exciting this message was today. Brother Tim preached an awesome message. I like the part where he said, it's not over. Amen. While the church is still here, I'll tell you what, there is an answer. 
You are the answer, amen, for your family, for your friends. Next service we have, invite some people to your home if it be. And, and hey, listen, tell them that there is going to be a great meeting, some great preaching, and some great teaching. Wednesday at 7 p.m., Brother Webb will be teaching. He is continuing, I believe, on the oneness. If you have never heard it, heard it, then you need to come in here. Bring your Bible. Sit in your room. Amen. Enjoy the great teaching. Don't miss it. Amen. Listen, if you need to find out more information about our church, go to the website, newlifecenterupc.com. Go to the website there. And you'll find more information about us. We do have a, a, a marking on there. It's called a, a, a media, a, how to help the church. You can go on there for online giving to help the church at the expense of what is going on. And we want to be helped to many other people. Thank you for being part of our, our church. And we be part of you. In Jesus' name, amen.